Um, next up is uh, Tony Tong, who's going to talk about patent flows in and out of China. So uh, what I'm going to do uh, is to uh, talk about some uh, macro trends of uh, patenting activities in China and also uh, Chinese firms and organizations seeking patents uh, outside of China. And because I'm also a, uh, I'm actually a micro researcher, so I'm going to talk about some uh, company examples uh, that uh, are based in China, you know, looking for uh, patenting uh, opportunities uh, around the world, and then hopefully to draw some implications uh, for the uh, so-called uh, innovation-driven uh, growth economy uh, in China. Um, so uh, I will start with this uh, slide uh, with some uh, familiar terms that uh, uh, you know, many of you guys have seen before. Uh, so for example, in 2014, the idea of new normal, uh, sort of suggesting a slower uh, economic growth in China in the next you know, few years or in the next decade. And then uh, 2015, 2016, uh, the government is selling the idea of uh, encouraging uh, entrepreneurship and innovation as the sort of engines for uh, further economic growth. Now the question is that you know, those ideas are great ideas. You know, promoting entrepreneurship and you know, promoting innovation, you know, those are great ideas. But the question for researchers would be you know, how do we actually you know, look at innovation activities? How do we actually measure you know, entrepreneurial activities, right? Uh, so uh, what I do is that uh, I've been looking at uh, patent statistics for, uh, for many years. I've uh, looked at both uh, patent statistics in the US, uh, which uh, you know, the USPTO, the United States uh, Patent Tra Trademark Office, you know, administers the uh, patent uh, registration in the US. Uh, I've also looked at uh, patent statistics from other countries uh, with the caveat that uh, Patent is just one uh, potential indicator of innovation because uh, we know that uh, companies' propensity to uh, patent varies significantly, very significantly. Okay, and we know that uh, uh, that variation is also widely seen across industries and even across countries. Right. So, with the caveat that uh, patent is just a limited uh, indicator of uh, innovation, I'm going to show you uh, some uh, broad. Uh, uh, indicators and hoping to uh, draw some implications about the uh, innovation activity in China and also the potential quality of the innovation happening in China right now. Um, now the next, this slide uh, shows uh, the, uh, the four most important patent office in the, in the world right now. Okay? And this was actually, uh, this title of uh, the changing face of innovation was actually the uh, title of the uh, annual report of WIPO, uh, which stands for World Intellectual Property Organization uh, based in Geneva. Uh, in that year, in 2011, the emphasis was focused on uh, new innovations and new technologies coming from emerging economies like Brazil, like you know, China, uh, you know, those countries. Uh, now, if you, if you look at this next slide, uh, these this data this diagrams are directly from that uh, report from uh, WIPO. So if you compare China's share of R&D in 2009 and 2000, uh, 1993, you'll see a big increase uh, in terms of the, uh, its share of world R&D. Uh, now, of course, the, the numbers here, the, the, share here, the share information here is uh, based on the constant uh, PPP of 2005. Now, uh, you might be wondering, you know, what would be the most recent share of world R&D of China now? Now, there's a UNESCO report, uh, which, uh, uh, was just uh, published last year, uh, showing that China's share is about 20% uh, now. Uh, it's far uh, exceeding uh, Japan's share of 10%, uh, but still way below uh, United States 30% uh, share. Now, as you can imagine, with uh, greater R&D investment, okay, uh, you're likely to see increases in patent applications, right? Now, of course, we also know that patent applications a function of both R&D uh, capacity or R&D efficiency and also uh, individual firms patenting propensity. Okay? So with that uh, sort of background in mind, uh, let me show you some, uh, uh, let me talk a little bit about the uh, institutions behind China's uh, 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 patent policy. So basically, you know, if you look at the paper, uh, if you look at the, uh, the laws uh, on the paper, uh, the laws are pretty much uh, in line with international standards. 
But of course, we could argue that, you know, in China, when it comes to execution, it may not be as consistent with, you know, the international standards, but that's very tough to measure. Now, there are three types of patents being granted by China's patent office called SIPO, uh, State Intellectual Property Office. Uh, invention patents, utility model patents, and also design patents. Now, I will not go into the detail to explain, you know, what are the differences between the three different types, uh, but just keep in mind that invention patents are the most valuable, you know, patents or innovations. Uh, in the United States, we call that utility patents. Uh, the other two types, you could view them as like uh, incremental innovation, you know, petty patents. Uh, in, we, are, we do not have those patents pretty much in the United States. But you can see those kind of patents in Europe, for example. Now look at this, in, this surge in patenting activities in China. Uh, the, uh, the surge, uh, I would say, uh, started uh, around 2000, and that sort of coincides with WTO, and that, you know, on the one hand, a lot of firms in China, based in China, they want to patent in China first. In the meantime, a lot of foreign firms, they also seek patents in China as well. Now in 2011, uh, the number of, uh, you, the number of uh, invention patent applications uh, went above uh, half a million and making China the largest patent office in the world. Now the, what's, what's tricky though is that if you look at the most recent year's numbers, okay, if you just focus on invention patent applications, it further increased from about 900,000 to over 1.1 million. So one, so one would begin to, to, to question you know, what is behind this you know, surge of patent applications, right? On the one hand, it's true that the uh, R&D investment has been increasing and the efficiency probably increased too, but then you know, you know, all their other you know, policy you know, sort of uh, incentives for them to, uh, to apply for patents. And of course, the answer, I, th I believe, is yes. Now, if you look at the uh, patent grants, uh, granted patents, again, uh, there's a huge increase uh, over the last year, 2015, uh, uh, compared with 2014. Uh, this follows the trend of invention, uh, this follows the trend of uh, patent applications uh, at SIPO. Now, you, you could also look at the breakdown between uh, applications by domestic entities and also foreign entities. Now, if you look at um, uh, the top two lines, which are the so-called patent patents, uh, most of the, those patent applications and also grants are by domestic entities, right? Uh, but the bottom line is, uh, is representing invention patents, the most valuable patents. And here, what you see is that the domestic parties' application in terms of percentage in you know, the share actually increased over time. Uh, in 2015, uh, domestic firms uh, accounted for over 80% of the uh, patent applications. Now, uh, in the next few slides, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, the value of uh, obtaining patents uh, in China and also the value of uh, patents, uh, you know, that developed by, uh, or innovation developed by Chinese entities. Now, uh, this slide shows a break up uh, between uh, domestic entities and foreign entities that seek patents with uh, uh, SIPO. And clearly, you see, actually, you see a big increase for both domestic entities and foreign entities, okay? Now, of course, the, the growth rate for domestic entities is higher. It's about 20%, for example, for last year. But for foreign entities seeking patents, the growth was about 5 to 6%. That's still pretty uh, impressive. Because if you look at, like, USPTO, if you look at uh, Japanese Patent Office, the number of applications uh, in the last few years, they, they, they increased very, very slowly. Uh, so this clearly is a value of seeking patents in China with China's patent office, you know, as perceived by uh, uh, foreign entities, okay? Now, you could also look at uh, the uh, total number of uh, patent applications and grants by foreign uh, entities. Now, uh, in terms of country distribution, uh, Japan is the largest country, is the largest user, largest foreign user of Chinese patent system, right? So it accounts for about... 40% of the granted patents and also patents enforced. So patents enforced are those patents that are still did not expire because the applicant still pay a renewal fee to keep it enforced, right? So United States stands number two uh, in terms of this list. Uh, but you can also look at the, uh, the breakdown between domestic and foreign. So here, uh, if you look at uh, the percentage of granted patents and percentage of granted patents enforced, uh, foreign entities account for about 
right? So I think there's a sort of a clear story then that uh, foreign firms perceive seeking patents in China as having some value, even though that value is very hard to uh, assess, right? Now this next slide shows the top 10 domestic firms and top 10 foreign firms uh, seeking patents uh, with uh, with SIPO. And here, the, the, the yellow uh, roles are the foreign entities, right? So Qualcomm is actually number one you know, in last year, 2015. And, uh, and the countries from like, Japan, from, from Europe, and from, uh, uh, from South Korea. Now, the, uh, uh, the other firms are the top 10 uh, Chinese domestic firms patenting mm -hmm. with uh, SIPO. But on the far end, I also shows the number of uh, patents that they own with the USPTO in last year, in 2015. So clearly, you know, one implication here is that uh, some of these Chinese domestic firms which are active in innovation, like ZTE, like <laughs> Huawei, you know, like uh, some of the firms, they seek patents very aggressively actually with USPTO, but you know, domestic firms, like uh, domestic state-owned entities like, uh, you know, China Grid and you know, other, uh, 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 China uh, Petrochemical, they, they don't really care about obtaining patents overseas. Now, um, let me show you, I have a couple more slides to show you uh, the uh, uh, patenting activities by Chinese firms uh, with the USPTO. So uh, it, it did start very, very low uh, in early uh, 2000, but it increased very, very significantly over time. Uh, so that the overall trends is there. Uh, if you look at the top firms seeking patents in China, uh, you know, one interesting observation though is that most of these firms are based in Shenzhen, in Guangdong, and uh, in southern China, and almost predominantly, almost always a private firm, okay, rather than a state-owned firm, right? Uh, now, you could also look at the WIPO data, and uh, uh, in here, again, you see a huge increase over, 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 over time. And here, I don't have the data to show the top 10 Chinese firms seeking patents with WIPO, but I do have data to show you these top 10 firms uh, patenting uh, through the WIPO. And here, uh, Huawei and ZTE, those are the top two or top three firms, uh, followed by Qualcomm and, and Samsung, other you know, Japanese and uh, Korean firms. Now, uh, back to the SOEs. Uh, one thing I did is that I used a sort of a natural experiment uh, in 2000, uh, which was the year in which the uh, amendment to the patent law was passed, to examine you know, how does the, uh, uh, the passage of the patent law, uh, amendment affects SOEs patent applications and patent quality compared with non-SOEs, right? Because in that patent amendment, there's a clause that sort of stimulates state-owned enterprises to, to patent, right? So what you, hear, what you see here is in, in figure one, uh, state-owned enterprises invention patent applications uh, actually was not as impressive post the reform, okay? But they, seek, they, they, they did seek a lot of patents in terms of uh, utility model patents and design patents, which are patent patents. So there's sort of strategic behavior by SOEs. They focus more on quantity, but they do not focus as much on quality. Now, if you look at the number of claims in each patent, which is sort of a measure of the quality of the patents, uh, you also see that private firms, they actually increase their quality more after the, uh, uh, the, the second amendment, but SOEs, they actually decrease. Uh, now, some of the challenges uh, that we uh, have in doing research on uh, you know, at the micro level is how do we know how many patents a firm has, right? So you need to do a lot sort of disambiguation of the names, and you need to consolidate companies' affiliation. So one thing I did was create a database that matched uh, SIPO patents with all kinds of firms, you know, domestic firms, listed firms, non-listed firms, and uh, foreign firms seeking patents in China too. So it was a painstaking effort uh, to sort of, uh, sort of to uh, advertise my uh, project a little bit here. We have a website and uh, uh, Researchers feel free to download the database and it's all free and we've put a lot of efforts into that. Now this is my last slide. So uh, again, I start with the idea that patents are just one indicator of innovation. Now clearly with the uh, growth in R&D investment, with the uh, you know, use of policy instruments, uh, I think China started to become an innovative country in many ways. Okay? But the question is that how long could those you know, the policy instruments go in terms of you know, creating an innovation-driven economy. Uh, I have some initial evidence to show that SOEs, they are sort of strategic players. They seek uh, quantity, they focus less on quality. And if that's the case, you know, can China uh, become a truly innovative country uh, just relying on policy instruments? Uh, so that's the uh, you know, uh, question I have for everyone to, to think about. Okay, I'm using more than I 
Very good. Very good. Thank you.